new background who did? That's not funny. So today I wanted to obsess over New Zealand for just a sec, if for no other reason than to escape the dumpster fire that is my very own American government right now. Um, I was actually just in New Zealand. I got back just before shit hit the fan, luckily. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really liked it there. The landscapes and the wildlife really lived up to the hype for me. I'll insert some of the photos and videos from my trip here. Um, so yeah, that's that's the obvious reason. Number one, New Zealand, it's fucking pretty. We're gonna do four more though. Reason two, I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan, so getting to see the filming locations in real life was beyond a dream come true for me. And I mean, come on, look at those hobbit holes. Are they not, are they not adorable? Reason three, Jacinda Ardern, hello. I mean, hopefully you weren't sick of me talking about her yet because I've barely scratched the surface. When she was selected, she was the youngest female head of state at 37 years old. She became only the second elective head of state to give birth while in office. I mean, come on. I don't even want to give birth. Sounds scary as shit, but like do it whilst running a country? No thanks. I'm good. She responded to a mass shooting by immediately banning semi-automatic weapons. Being from the States, this one actually like shook me to my core. What a freaking concept. As I mentioned in another video, she and several other top ministers took a 20% pay cut in solidarity with those who have lost their jobs or lost income due to the pandemic. Again, being from the States, what a mind-blowing act of leadership that I just would not ever even think to expect from my own government. When it comes to environmental stuff, she's banned plastic bags and is working on bans for lots of other single-use plastics. She has welcomed refugees, she has addressed domestic violence issues. But my favorite thing she has done, which I touched briefly on in my degrowth video, but I want to go into more in depth about now, is rejecting GDP as a measure of progress for New Zealand. Like I said before, she's described growth at all costs capitalism a blatant failure and rolled out the well being budget, which prioritizes helping citizens lead fulfilling lives with purpose, balance, and meaning over any other goals. This means protecting the environment and addressing climate change, strengthening communities, and tackling inequality, especially with regard to indigenous peoples. Of course, there will always be critics of her policies, and not everything she has done is perfect in my book either, but the thing that is important to me is that she is leading. She's trying to create systemic change and you know that's so important because if no one ever tries we'll never find out what works and what doesn't reason four the people there just have their freaking priorities straight and i got a sense for this while i was there but it really hit me when i was scrolling the r slash new zealand subreddit the other day you know as you do <laughs> And in the last couple of days, people have really been talking about what they've learned from the pandemic. This user talked about being on the corporate grind for 15 years and only now in the lockdown has found time to truly be present with their kids, spending time in the garden, cooking from scratch, not feeling that frantic rush every day to get everything done. And then they go on to say, my life has been infinitely more enjoyable because it has been slower and more meaningful. This dream life that they describe, living off the land, working part-time, being near family, this is exactly the type of stuff degrowth and well-being approaches are trying to encourage. Lots of people in the comments are saying similar things and talking about how the pandemic has really shifted their view of their own priorities. And this is just like, it gives me so much hope. There's another post from last week talking about similar things and the top, top comment says they've been downgraded to 80% hours in pay from their job but they don't want to ever go back because they so enjoy the time they're able to spend with their loved ones and doing the things that they love. The last two sentences here, this is exactly what I was talking about in my deed growth video. Another commenter said it a little more aggressively but the point is a lot of us can work less, especially in a country which takes care of things like healthcare for their citizens. 
Okay, last reason, reason five, that's 10, reason five. They have given a river, a mountain, and a forest the legal rights of a person. I know that sounds crazy. So basically, the Maori see rivers and mountains, etc., etc., as living things, as their ancestors, and regard them as deeply sacred. So the New Zealand Parliament decided to declare the Wanganui River, a Urewero forest, and Mount Taranaki as indivisible living holes that henceforth possess all the rights, powers, duties, and liabilities of a legal person. This is not just an acknowledgement of indigenous culture and beliefs of the Maori, but an institutionalization of a view held by many peoples all over the world that the well-being of the earth is as essential to us as each other, and it deserves to be protected accordingly. The Maori think of humans as neither superior nor inferior to the natural world, Many see these relational views of the world that are common to indigenous beliefs as both intrinsically right and desperately necessary to resolve humanity's environmental crisis. So yeah, those are just a few of the reasons I think New Zealand is pretty dang cool. Um, there's going to be links in the description for more information if you're feeling like doing some reading. Give this video a like if you learned something. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. You can post questions in the subreddit. And yeah. Bye.